Welcome to week three of basic serials cataloging. Last week we talked about some of the mark fields in a record for a serial. Um, we talked mainly about the ones that deal with title related information. This week we're going to talk about a lot more mark fields in a serial record. This is probably maybe the most technically difficult week of the class. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about mark fields for other descriptive elements and access points, and then we'll talk about notes in the next video for this week. The first field we're going to talk about is the 250 field, which is where you put an addition statement. Now the addition statement is a little bit different with serials than with monographs because an addition has to apply to all issues of a particular resource. Um, so where you'll most often see this in the 250 field would be when there are two versions of a resource issued simultaneously. Um, for example, you'll see on the slide here you could have one that are published for different geographic areas, a Northwest edition and a Southern edition, or four different intended uses, a reference edition and a personal edition, or in different languages, say Spanish and English. So these are um, issues that come out simultaneously, you know, and the entire run of the periodical is published in multiple editions. But, and so the content might vary a little bit based on what edition it is. And so this is the type of edition statement that would go in a 250 field. Um, you can see that the edition statement goes in subfield A and both indicators are blank. They are undefined for a 250 field. Now, you might see other things that say edition on the cover of an issue of a serial, um, but they're not considered necessarily edition statements that would go in the 250 field, they might be more uh, an example of the numbering of the serial. You know, if it's an annual report or something like that, you know, each issue, so to speak, would come out once a year and would be called, you know, the, the 1990 edition, the 1991 edition, things like that. So yeah, numbered editions or editions based on the year are generally considered to be more of numbering and they would appear in the 362 field, which we'll talk more about later. The next field we're going to talk about is the 264 field, and this is where you put information about the publication of a resource. Um, this would include the place of publication, the name of the publisher, and the date of publication. So you should record the place of publication and the name of the publisher as they appear on the item. You know, if some part of the name is abbreviated on the item, abbreviate it in your record. If it's all spelled out, spell it out on your record. Same goes for the place of publication. If it has a city and a state, include those both. If it just has the city, go ahead and just include that. If the state is abbreviated, abbreviate it. If it's spelled out, spell it out in your record. The place of publication goes in subfield A, and the publisher's name goes in subfield B. And notice there's a space, colon, space for the punctuation between these two subfields. Um, I will say, for the purposes of this class, we're always talking about publication information in the 264 field, so the second indicator will always be a 1. That means that we're talking about publisher information. If you have the first or the last piece in hand in front of you, um, then you can go ahead and put a date in subfield C in your 264 field. Um, if you have, have both the first and last issue, you can have a range of dates, say 1985 to 2007, expressed as 1985-2007, and then a period. Um, if you just have the first issue, you put the first date, and if you know that the publication is still going, have a hyphen and then leave that open-ended. If you have just the last issue, put a hyphen and then the last date, so it's just the closing end of a range of dates. If you have a change in publisher, and sometimes serials do, you can use more than one 264 field. Um, in this case, you would add a subfield 3 to each of them, specifying what dates were the serial was published by each publisher. The, um, the earliest publisher would have a blank first indicator in your 264 field. The current one would have a 3. Again, both of them would have 1 for the second indicator. And so you'll notice that, like I said, you have subfield 3 to specify the dates, and then, as usual, your subfield A is for the place of publication. And, of course, your uh, publisher's name would still go in subfield B. If you don't know the date that this 
um, serial ran and you can approximate them, then you don't need to record a date. You just have a subfield A with the place of publication and a subfield B with the publisher's name. You don't need a subfield C at all. The next field we're going to talk about is the 300 field for physical description. Um, this is where you, just what it sounds like, you describe what the item looks like, how big it is, how many um, volumes it has, does it have illustrations. Um, if a serial is complete, meaning it has finished being published, and you know how many volumes there were overall, you can include that information. Put um, 27 volumes, for example, in your subfield A for your 300 field. Um, then you have a space, colon, space, and then in subfield B you put in illustration information. If there are illustrations, go ahead and include that information. Then you have a space, semicolon, space, and in subfield C you put the dimensions, meaning the height of the item, and you measure that in centimeters, rounded up to the nearest centimeter. Um, I'll mention at this point, notice that both indicators for the 300 field are undefined, they're both blank. If the series, serial is not complete, then you don't know how many total volumes there are, so you can just put the word volumes to indicate that it was issued in multiple volumes, and then have subfield B and subfield C the same as you would with a complete serial. Or, according to the RDA rules, you can omit this field entirely if the publication is still being published, and you can come back and add it when it's complete. The next field you'll see in serial records is the frequency note. This goes in a 310 field, and the frequency is just how often this publication is published. Um, annual, a lot of things come out once a year, quarterly for four times a year. Um, there might be a little bit more obscure. For example, the example we looked at last week with the Tennessee Ancestors um, serial came out, came out three times a year, so three numbers a year is what we would put in the subfield A. Again, both indicators are blank for this field. Um, optionally, if you know the former frequency, and this is another tricky thing about serials, sometimes they change frequency. Um, so if you know the former frequency, um, you can go ahead and put that in a 321 field. You still put the current frequency in 310, but you can add a subfield B for the dates when it started being issued at this frequency. And then you have a 321 field with the former frequency and the dates that it was issued at this frequency. Another field is to indicate the numbering of the serial item. This goes in the 362 field. Um, use this field only when information is available about the first uh, or last issue. So if you, do, you have that information in front of you or you know the information about that item. So it can say began in 1990 or it can have a volume and a date and it can also tell you when it ceases. Um, these are what's called unformatted um, numbering statements. So that means they get a first indicator of 1 for this 362 field, and the second indicator is blank. Um, if both the numbering, so number 1, for example, and the chronology, the dates, January 1997 in that top example, if those are both available, go ahead and include them both. You would put the numbering first and then the chronology in parentheses. And if the numbering or the date, I mean, mean the name of the month are spelled out on the item, spell them out. If they're abbreviated, go ahead and abbreviate them in your record as they appear on the item. You can, however, make some changes. You can change Roman numerals to Arabic numerals, because that's probably easier to understand. And you should convert words to numbers. So if it was volume 1 spelled out O-N-E, you can go ahead and put that as a number in your record, in your 362 field. The next three elements we're going to kind of talk about as a group, they are content type, media type, and carrier type. They are new elements for RDA. They did not exist under ASCR2 rules. These replace what's known as the general material designation, the GMD, which was that term in brackets that you would see right after the title of an item when you do a search result, uh, when you do a search and you get your results list. Um, content type, media type, and carrier type all kind of work together to describe what an item is that you're cataloging. Um, content type is the broadest, sort of most abstract. It doesn't have anything to do with the physical carrier. For example, print books and ebooks both have a content type of text because that's still what they are, regardless of how you interact with them in a physical object. Media type has more to do with um, how 
like I said, how you interact with the item, um, what type of equipment you need to interact with the item. So, for example, um, DVDs and streaming videos both have the media type of video because they're both visual items. You need some kind of video equipment to interact with them. But they have different carriers. One comes on a disc and one is an online resource. So they have the same media type, but as we'll see, they have different carrier types. Um, a DVD would have the carrier type of video disc, whereas a streaming video would have the carrier type of online resource. So they are both related because they have the same media type of video, but the physical item is a little is different in these cases. So as you saw in the past few slides, content type, media type, and carrier type go in mark fields 336, 337, and 338. Um, they come, the terms that you need to use in these fields come from very specific lists of uh, approved terms. They are part of the RDA rules. They're available on the RDA toolkit, which is the online product that you can access the RDA rules for a subscription fee. They are also all available for free on the Library of Congress website, so those are the lists to consult for your content type, media type, and carrier type. Um, these are pre-established control vocabularies. You can't just use whatever term you want. You need to choose one from these lists. The good thing is that once you know what the content, media, and carrier type is for a particular type of item you're working with, you can just use it across the board. So for example, a print serial, a text item, that you hold in your hand in volumes, the carrier or content type is text, and so that goes in subfield A of your 336 field. The media type is unmediated because you don't need any extra equipment in order to read a print serial. You just need the volume there in your hand. So that unmediated goes in subfield A of your 337 field. And the carrier type, the physical thing that you actually hold in your hand, is a volume. So that goes in your subfield A of your 338 field. Subfield 2 as well. Um, these are used to specify the source of these terms. Like I said, they have to come from these control lists in the RDA rules. And right now, that's the only option for these terms. So the subfield 2 for the 336, 337, and 338 fields will always look like this. You know, so no matter what it is that you're cataloging. Um, and these are all kind of codes that mean this comes from the RDA list of content, media, and carrier types. So for your 336 field, subfield 2 is RDA content, run together like one word. Um, for the 337, it's RDA media. And for the 338, it's RDA carrier. And so you'll notice that those subfield 2, what's in those fields, subfields is the same, regardless of the form that you're working with. So you can just remember that across the board. Um, so here's an example for an online serial, for example, um, and you'll notice that the content type of text is still the same, but it's not unmediated. You need a computer in order to read it, so computer is the term in the 337 field, subfield A, and then your carrier type is online resource, meaning that it's not something you um, have on a disk, for example, it's not on a CD, it is online, so that goes in your subfield A of your 338 field. The last thing we're going to talk about this week is, or I'm sorry, in this section is um, an access point for a corporate body. Sometimes in serials you might want to be able to search for an organization that is related to the serial somehow. Um, in this case, this item was published by Academic Press, but there was a note that says it's published under the auspices of the International Academy of Science. And so if you think that's an important organization that your patrons might want to search for, you can include a 710 field, which is for an access point for a corporate body. And go ahead and you would need to look up the correct form of this in the authority file and then put that in a 700, oh, I'm sorry, a 710 field. So those are the other remaining descriptive elements and an access point field for serial records.